Welcome to this session. Earlier in this module, we heard about the European Competence Framework, which refers to key competences. This concept has been adopted by all European education systems, but the specific terms used and the exact content of the set of competences varies across countries. Depending on the country and context, legal, policy and curricular documents make reference to core competences, for example, key capacities, as in Scotland, basic skills, as in Spain, or key skills, as in Ireland and other similar terms are also in use. Several European countries, including Austria, Bulgaria, France, Spain, Portugal and Poland, have introduced new legislation or amended existing legislation to set out core goals and frameworks for integrating key competences into school education. Most European countries have also introduced key competences and related learning outcomes into the national curricula for compulsory education during the last decade. For example, France introduced competence-based education in 2005 through the Socle Commun, a common core curriculum comprising seven competences, largely in line with the European key competences. A new Education Act, which confirms a new common core for knowledge, competences and now also culture, was adopted in July 2013. In 2006, Spain published its Organic Act on Education, which specifically mentioned eight key competences as the building blocks of the Spanish school curriculum. This has been accompanied by a national programme introduced by the Ministry of Education in collaboration with 12 of Spain's autonomous communities, which aims at consolidating the integration of key competences into the school curriculum. In countries including Finland and Sweden, where a competence-based approach has in fact been in place since the mid-90s, recent or current education reform is re-emphasising the centrality of key competences in the new curricula to be introduced in the near future. Therefore, key competences have been, and still are, the focus of educational reform. However, the situation across Europe is rather varied, with only some countries and regions having launched overarching strategies fostering the development of all or most of the key competences, including Spain, Poland, Lithuania and Austria, for example. In the absence of a national strategy, most other European countries have established centrally or regionally coordinated initiatives to promote specific key competences. While no country has made a complete shift to competence-based education, several countries have made significant progress. In addition to introducing legal and curricular frameworks for key competences, countries have used various strategies to foster a competence-based approach in the classroom. These include innovative partnerships, pilot projects, the monitoring and evaluation of new initiatives, dedicated funding and capacity building. Let's take a look at some of these strategies by listening to stakeholders who have been involved in key competence initiatives, featured in case study videos produced by KeyConet, the European network on key competences in school education. Norway's Cultural Rucksack Programme is a good example of a national initiative which has used an innovative partnership between the educational and cultural sectors, as well as dedicated funding, to ensure all young people in Norway have the opportunity to engage with high-quality professional arts and culture. The programme has secured funding from the support of surplus national lottery funds. The Cultural Rucksack is a national programme of professional arts and culture that goes out to absolutely every child, school child in Norway, from age six, five, six and until 18. Sometimes the artist comes to the school and sometimes the schools or the pupils go out to the artistic venue or, or visit an artist. The programme helps the students develop uh, cultural awareness of the different expressions. Also, it helps them to develop reflection, uh, individuality, and, and uh, we also hope that the programme and the meeting of the art gives them different tools of understanding and make a different approach to subjects in school that are not only the aesthetic subject, but also as, uh, subjects as math and, and, uh, and science to actually manage to give professional art to every child uh, in Norway is a huge success. And also, I will say, it's a huge success that we have managed to uh, involve absolutely every artist living in Norway, almost. And the institutions from the opera, the national opera and ballet, uh, to the local like cultural museum, everybody is in the programme. 
Another example of a large-scale initiative which engages schools with the broader community is the Global Enterprise Project, which teams up students with professionals from the business sector. In the GEP, students benefit uh, from the involvement of uh, business volunteers from several multinational companies. Uh, their role is to uh, teach uh, in school uh, practical activities and to come with examples from uh, the world of uh, work. The main reason we believe it's important to marry up business volunteers and students is to get a very clear focus on the end product that's needed out of the educational system. Instead of producing product for a market and hoping to find a, mar a home for it, by marrying the two we get a very clear focus on the business needs, not just of the present but of the future. The Global Enterprise Project allowed me to basically work with young uh, people, young students, young, young uh, adults, uh, and it rejuvenated me. These are our future generation, these are our future customers, these are our future employees. So if we start to engage with them right now and understand what their potential is, of course our life will be easier and our business will be sustainable over time. Some countries have invested in, in intensive professional development when introducing new competence-based initiatives, like Project Maths in Ireland, which you will be hearing about in the next video. Each pilot school involved in Project Maths was allocated a regional officer to provide teachers with in-school training to support them in this new approach to teaching, learning and assessment. Portugal is an example of a country with a specific initiative aimed at developing teachers' ICT skills so that they can in turn develop their students' digital competence. The EduScratch initiative promotes the educational use of the programming tool Scratch, which helps develop students' computational thinking. Teachers were offered in-service training to support their use of the tool. O Scratch para mim começou uh, no ano 2010 no Scratch Day, quando através da formação do Politécnico de Setúbal de professores de primeiro ciclo, não fazia ideia do que era o Scratch, já tinha ouvido falar do Logo, do Logo Writer. Então, vamos lá, levei, levei a minha filha, que na altura tinha sete anitos, computador, computador na mão e fomos para Setúbal. Trouxe o Scratch para a sala, instalei em dois ou três computadores, já todos eles tinham mails, já faziam PowerPoint, já faziam um bocadinho, já tinham a TIC um bocadinho implementada na sala. Comecei a desenvolver um projeto sério. De 15 em 15 dias tínhamos aula de Scratch, laboratório, projeto de turma. Fizemos trabalhos, jogos, animações, começámos a fazer projetos partindo dos textos de língua portuguesa do Plano Nacional de Leitura, fazíamos, trabalhávamos o texto de língua portuguesa, fazíamos uma animação pequenina das personagens. É possível ensinar às crianças uma linguagem de programação, levando-as a aprender mais e melhor com as TIC? Com o Scratch, um ambiente gráfico de programação desenvolvido no MIT, a resposta é sim. Some education systems have also provided centrally developed tools to help teachers implement this new approach to teaching and learning. Last year, Spain published a didactic guide for teachers to support their integration of key competences in the classroom. Poland has also recently developed a teaching tools database, which includes a bank of complex ready-to-use tasks, which teachers can use to develop their students' critical thinking and reasoning skills. The tools database was created to support teachers in implementing the new competence-based curriculum introduced in 2008, which prioritizes the development of students' problem-solving skills. Jest tylko i wyłącznie szkolny, odtwórczy, ale właśnie kontekst wymagający rozumowania, nie tyle odtworzenia zapamiętanych wiadomości, ale właśnie wykorzystania tych wiadomości w interpretacji otaczającego świata, czy w rozwiązywaniu pewnych, e, pewnych problemów. Bardzo... Myślimy, że te zadania pomogą nauczycielom wyłożyć swoje własne scenariusze lekcji, dzięki którym będzie im łatwiej pracować z młodzieżą w sposób atrakcyjny, wciągający i rozbudzający chęć do nauki. We recently launched an online survey about stakeholders' experiences of competence-based education across Europe. We got responses from over 3,000 teachers, around 800 students, 700 parents and 500 head teachers. While the results highlight some important issues, we should be careful in our interpretation of them, as the survey was not based on random sampling and country representation was uneven. The good news is, is that there is almost universal agreement among teachers, students, parents and heads that key competences are indeed important for helping people succeed in learning and in life. Progress has been made in defining and integrating key competences in national curricula. However, if competence-based education is to become a reality, 
Improvement is needed in terms of collaboration and communication among stakeholders. Only 18% of teachers indicated that their school had engaged with the broader community to facilitate the integration of competence-based learning. Similarly, only 21% of parents stated that they had participated in discussions about competence-based education, while only 65% of students said that their teachers had explained the purposes and goals of key competences to them. A participative approach involving communication with all key stakeholders is essential to building broad support for new competence-based reforms. School leaders play an important role in communicating the objectives of the new approach to teachers, parents, learners and the wider community. Remember that you can access further reading and related resources to this session, including the full versions of the videos you saw, from our course library. We also encourage you to visit the course forum, where you can discuss any of the issues mentioned in the session and exchange with your peers about your own country experiences of developing key competences in schools.